Hi everyone, welcome back to Lingua Discovery. My name is Josh, and today we're exploring how languages have adapted to an essential tool in the digital world, the keyboard. From the invention of the typewriter to the development of computer keyboards, this transition has had profound implications for languages across the globe. To understand how languages adapted to the digital era, we have to start with the typewriter. The first commercially successful typewriter was invented in 1868 by Christopher Latham Schultz, an American newspaper editor and politician. Schultz's goal was simple, to speed up the process of writing, and the typewriter certainly achieved that. The early typewriters were designed specifically for English, which uses the Latin alphabet. Schultz also introduced the now-famous QWERTY keyboard layout. This was not a random arrangement. QWERTY was created to solve a mechanical issue. By placing frequently used letters farther apart, it reduced the risk of the type bars jamming while typing quickly. At first, the typewriter was a major breakthrough, allowing people to write much faster than by hand. However, it also had some limitations. For example, it was inherently designed for languages using the Latin alphabet, and this posed challenges for languages with different scripts. As we entered the computer age, it became clear that the typewriter wasn't sufficient to handle diver the diverse languages of the world. Now, let's fast forward to the 1960s and the rise of computers. Early computer keyboards were modeled after typewriters, keeping the same QWERTY layout. The first computer keyboards were developed by IBM for their man mainframe computers. Once again, these keyboards were designed for English and other languages using the Latin alphabet. While the QWERTY layout was carried over, computers introduced new possibilities. Most importantly, the ability to store and process data in multiple languages. This would be crucial as more languages sought to enter the digital age. But the shift was seamless. Each language had unique challenges in adapting to the keyboard. Let's take a closer look at how different languages approached this transition. Let's start with the familiar QWERTY layout. Despite its widespread use, QWERTY has been criticized for its inefficiency. Studies have shown that it wasn't necessarily the most optimal layout for fast typing. In response, alternative keyboard layouts were developed, such as the Dvorak Simplified Keyboard, which aimed to reduce finger movement and increase typing speed. Dvorak placed the most commonly used letters in English on the home row, where the fingers naturally rest. While it's proven to be faster for some users, QWERTY remains dominant due to historical inertia and the fact that most people have grown accustomed to it. Another example is the Azerty layout used primarily in French-speaking countries. Azerty swaps several keys around compared to QWERTY to accommodate the unique needs of the French language such as accents, and special characters, like the city. While this layout serves French speakers better than QWERTY, it's still a Latin-based system, meaning its adoption was fairly smooth. Languages using the Cyrillic alphabet, like Russian, also faced the challenge of adapting to the keyboard. This layout was developed for the Russian in the early 20th century. Since the Cyrillic alphabet has fewer letters than Latin alphabet, it fit comfortably on the keyboard without major alterations. Today, this layout is standard in Russia and other countries using the Cyrillic script. Adopting Cyrillic to computers wasn't particularly challenging, but it still required a unique solution to ensure that speakers could type as efficiently as their Latin alphabet counterparts. Brahmic scripts, which include writing systems used across South and Southeast Asia for languages like Hindi, Tamil, Bengali, and Thai posed unique challenges when adopted to keyboards. These scripts are often complex, with numerous diacritical marks, vowel signs, and conjunct consonants that change depending on their position in a word. The primary obstacle was fitting these intricate characters onto a standard keyboard layout without overwhelming users with too many keys. For most Brahmic scripts, Solutions came in the form of software-based input methods. For instance, the InScript keyboard layout was developed as a standardized solution for Indian languages, allowing users to type Hindi, Bengali, Tamil, and other scripts using a combination of keystrokes. 
This system assigns basic characters to single keys and more complex conjuncts or vowels to key combinations, which makes typing manageable. Additionally, virtual keyboards and phonetic input methods such as transliteration keyboards became popular. These allow users to type phonetically in Roman characters, and the software automatically converts the input into the respective phonetic script. For example, typing Namaste on a phonetic keyboard would convert it to its handy counterpart. Chinese was one of the most challenging languages to adapt to the keyboard, given its vast number of characters, over 50,000 in total, although only a few thousand are used regularly. Initially, inventors tried to fit as many characters as possible onto typewriters, but the results were cumbersome and inefficient. When computers arrived, a clever solution was found through input methods like Pinyin, the romanization system for Chinese. In this system, users type the Roman alphabet, and the computer suggests a list of Chinese characters that match the input. For example, typing Ni Hao in Pinyin generates the respective characters. This method has proven highly effective, allowing Chinese to thrive in the digital era, despite in the inherent challenges of its script. Today, Pinyin input methods are the most common way to type Chinese on computers and smartphones. Another method used in China is Wu Bi, which allows users to type characters based on their components. But Pinyin remains the dominant system due to its simplicity and familiarity. Chu Yin, also called Huo Po Mo Huo, is a phonetic system used mainly in Taiwan to type Chinese. Unlike Pinyin, which uses the Roman alphabet, Chu Yin uses unique symbols that represent Mandarin sounds. These symbols are arranged on the keyboard, and when typed, the system suggests the corresponding Chinese characters. While Pinyin is more common in mainland China, Chu Yin is widely used in Taiwan, especially in schools. It allows users to type Mandarin without relying on Roman letters, making it popular among those who prefer a more traditional system. Despite its regional use, Chuyin remains an important input method for typing Chinese. For Arabic, the challenges were twofold. Not only is the script cursive, but it's also written from right to left. Early typewriters couldn't handle these complexities, so Arabic typewriters were slow to develop. However, with computers, Arabic keyboards became much more efficient. The Arabic keyboard layout accommodates the script's unique letter shapes and connects characters appropriately. Additionally, modern software has solved the problem of right-to-left text entry, making Arabic input as smooth as typing in any other language. The adoption of lesser-used, endangered, and indigenous languages to keyboards presents unique challenges and opportunities. Many of these languages, like Cherokee in North America or Nosu Liangshan Yi in China, have their own scripts that predate modern technology. Cherokee, for instance, uses a syllabary developed by Sequoia in the early 19th century. Today, there are Cherokee Cuban layouts available for both computers and smartphones, allowing speakers to type in their native language. However, the creation of these tools is often limited by small speaker populations and funding constraints. The same goes for Nosu, a language of the Yi people in China, which uses a syllabary script developed more recently, and is now supported by Unicode, enabling digital input. In Africa, several new scripts have been developed in the last few decades for languages previously unwritten or reliant on colonial scripts, such as Nko for manding languages in Af West Africa, or Anlam for the Fulani language. The creators of these scripts have worked to integrate them into modern technology by developing custom keyword layouts and encoding them into Unicode. While this digital inclusion is a huge step forward, the success of these efforts depends heavily on access to technology and literacy in the new scripts. In many cases, mobile phones and the internet have been key to reviving these languages providing platforms where users can type, share, and promote their heritage languages. The di digital adoption of these languages not only preserves their use, but also plays a crucial role in their revitalization efforts. So, what does the future hold for language and technology? It will likely be driven by advancements in AI, language translation, and voice recognition. 
These developments will make cross-linguistic communication easier and help preserve endangered languages by bringing them online. As technology evolves, we may also see new ways to interact with language, such as brain-computer interfaces and more advanced voice input systems. That's all for today. Thanks for watching Lingua Discovery, and if you have any questions or thoughts, leave them in the comments. I'll see you next time.